Morning folks, here we are on day two. Uh, I slept really well. Um, I think Andy did as well. Uh, he's gone back to have another another half an hour. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good night's sleep. Uh, I've got up and made a cup of coffee and done a few of the chores. I've um, got some more got some more water out of the river. I've been using this water filter. I'll show you that a little bit later on. And it's working really well for us. Um, so yeah, that's that's really good. It, it, it's just nice not to have to carry all of our, our water with us. You know, we can just uh, we can just top up water bottles as and when we need to, which is great. Nice view of them trees. Yeah. A big one. Yeah, nice. White horse in the background. <laughs> White horse in the cherry tree. Nicole would say that's a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Just coming up to the village of Homersfield, and the river in this area, um, the reeds are harvested, and uh, they use them in making mat in making mats and carpets, reed carpets. But the other thing that Homersfield is famous for um, is a bridge. We'll be going under that bridge shortly, and it's the earliest concrete bridge. Um, and uh, yeah, it was commissioned and built there. It's no longer a road bridge because it's just not strong enough to take modern traffic but um, the footpath now goes over the over the bridge and they've built a new one but uh, the old one is still there and um, it's pretty impressive for a for a concrete early concrete structure I can't remember when it's built but um, yeah a long time ago Thomas Field's famous concrete bridge and underneath it are a whole load of wooden piles from a previous bridge which you can't help but hit. <laughs> Alright, we'll pull over here shall we? Pull over here for a sec. So something else worth noting is that here at Homersfield there's a, a pub, the Black Swan, and uh, you can camp in the uh, in the gardens behind. They have a camp area for canoeists or for touring uh, caravans and camper vans and things. So um, you know if you're planning on doing the Waveney and 
are trying to plan some overnight stops that don't involve uh, wild camping, this might be an option. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good day's paddle from Skull. Uh, we didn't quite make it here, but we, we started a little bit later because obviously Andy had to drive up from Kent. Um, but I'm sure if you started good and early, you'd, you'd certainly get here. Um, and that would be a good, it would be, be a hard paddle. It would be a full day's paddle, but uh, you could do it. And it would be a good, good place to stop. Uh, with a pub, so you can have a, a couple of refreshing beverages at the end of your hard day's paddle. And they do food. under it. Yeah. <laughs> there's the big cabin up there, up there, like on top of the hill. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was just impressed by the shed. <laughs> <laughs> that would do me. one of the more unexpected landmarks along the uh, along the river is Flixton Aviation Museum and uh, you come around a bend in the in the river and all of a sudden you you're facing the tail of a DC-3 sitting in a field. <laughs> it does look, uh, look looks a little odd but you know there you go. We've just pulled off the river for a spot of lunch. Both getting pretty hungry. So what are you going for today then, Andy? I'm thinking spam. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> see as we've already had some spam. Yeah. May as well carry it on. Double spam. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got in my lunch pack today, I've got um, crackers again like yesterday. I've got a cup of soup. I've got a tin of you're not going to like this, Andy, but sardines in tomato sauce. <laughs> and good old uh, custard creams. Spam! <laughs> ah, it's good hot. <laughs> Oh. 
We ay ya, uh, that's hot. Soup as well. Yeah, you can't have a you know, cornerstone of every <laughs> good lunch. Bit of soup. And spam and egg. Spam! <laughs> <laughs> So for water on this trip, um, we've been using this water filter. Um, this is a First Need XL, um, and it's a, it's a good little filter. This is obviously the first time I've used it, um, so I can't really review it as such, but um, so far it's worked really well for us. Um, it's quite big and bulky, um, and, it, and it's, it's fairly weighty compared to a lot of other uh, water filters, but what it's doing is it's saving us carrying multiple bottles of water so you know this weighs less than a litre of water and it's smaller than a bottle of water so you know we're going along in a river there's all this water here that we can that we can drink so uh, you know this has worked really well for us um, and it works by removing this cap on the bottom which is just a, um, a cap to keep dirt and stuff out of the out of the bottom which is where the clean water comes and then you can screw on a water bottle it fits all your Nalgene bottles um, and uh, I've got uh, an MSR dromedary bag as well. Uh, it fits that fine, just screws straight on. It doesn't screw on to um, like SIG bottles or anything like that, but you don't, it doesn't need to screw on. You know, you can just hold this above whatever you want to collect the water in and that's fine. So, um, you know, you just screw it on. You um, dip the other end here, which has a pre-filter on it and a little float. And the idea is to find a, a relatively cleanish bit of water um, and uh, yeah, you just dip the end in and pump. <laughs> well, that's it, lunch done. We're back on the river, now heading towards Bungie. We're in for a, an afternoon of blue sky and sunshine. Well, we're just coming through the town of Bungie. Um, you come through a bit of the town and then you do a big loop around some meadows and then you come back through the town again. So we've just done the first little leg through and um, it's quite shallow down there. Very bumpy, very rocky, kept bottoming out, having to get out of the canoe, drag it a bit, get back in. And we got down to the bottom of that section only to find that uh, Andy's action camera, which he had on the front of the canoe, um, had pinged off. So uh, obviously we didn't know whereabouts. So we've just both tied the canoe up to the side and walked back up the river, uh, <laughs> looking, for the, looking for the thing. And luckily, um, after about five minutes of looking, we managed to find it. So. That was a, a bit of a crisis averted because obviously all of his footage, well not all of his footage, but a lot of his footage, footage from this trip is on that camera, on, in the SD card, in that camera. So um, it was a bit of a relief. Lovely. And that's all one, isn't it? Yeah, I think that is all one. Red sycamore seeds. Yeah. Same road. That is the same road. Yeah. We went under. On the other side of the town, yeah. Yeah.
boat for sale. Right. Three twenty-five. It's got the trailer on it. I could take it back. Today. I um. Hey, I haven't got my tow bar on anymore. <laughs> tow bars on. There's, there's a kayak. There's a kayak for eighty-five quid. Hey. <laughs> All right. Legs all stuck up in the air. One, <laughs> one leg. <laughs> Chilling out. They're doing what you were doing. The drive just drying the feet. Yeah, one at a time. Pretty weird. <laughs> this is a special club. That's why they're all here. So we've left Bungie now, left the houses behind, and uh, it's gone six o'clock. What time is it when we last looked? Well, it was sort of six o'clock-ish, wasn't it? I can't even remember now. Yeah. Well, you don't want to be paddling until eight o'clock like we were yesterday. So uh, we're going to keep our eyes peeled for somewhere to, to stop and set up a camp. But looking at the map, there's nothing in the way of woodland along this bit. It's just sort of fields and floodplains, so I think we're gonna just get around a couple of bends so we've got the houses behind us and we're out of sight and then start looking for somewhere with uh, shorter grass than where we were last night because that was pretty much hell on earth for you, Andy, wasn't it? With the, yeah, it wasn't pleasant. <laughs> with all the pollen because all the grass is so tall. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was like a a hay fever nightmare. So uh, we're going to just see what we can find up here. It's such a beautiful evening. Oh. So the plan, as I said, was to find a wild camp spot uh, outside Bungie. So we, we paddled for a good half an hour or so out of Bungie downstream uh, and couldn't find anywhere. It was just floodplain. It's just um, open fields, long grass, or e either long grass or, uh, or cattle. Um, and nothing appropriate for, for camping, really, for, for us. So um, we made a decision to turn around and come back into Bungie, which we've done, and there's a campsite here. Um, and uh, and so we've we've pitched up. You can probably see behind me our our tents pitched up, um, and it's going to be great. We've got nice level flat ground to camp on. <laughs> we've got hot showers and normal campsite facilities to use. Um, so yeah, it's going to be it's going to be good. We'll get a good night's sleep. Um, so if you are planning on canoeing the Waveney, it might just be worth bearing this place in mind. It's called Outney Meadow Campsite in Bungie, and um, and they do canoe hire here as well. So what we got for dinner tonight then, Andy? Well, seeing as you were so kind to do the corned beef hash, uh, I thought I'd do us some uh, smoked sausage. Great. 
with pasta. Excellent. And tomato and chili sauce. Yummy. But no garlic bread, I'm afraid. No. <laughs> <laughs> it weighed too much. That sounds good to me. <laughs> that sounds really good. I'm starving. Glug my glug. Cheers, Andy. Cheers. Fosters. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. We can really taste the hops. Oh, look at that. And that's about there. Look at that. There. Look at that. It smells real good. That smokiness from the sausage comes through mm. really well. Mm. So I thought I'd better show you on the map uh, where we've been and where we are now, where we got to last night, etc. So we started off um, just here at uh, Skull Bridge and we paddled all the way along here. Obviously the river just meanders everywhere. And um, we came past the lakes at uh, Waybridge. We came up through Mendham and we camped just here last night. And then today we've traveled from where we camped last night along here. This is Homersfield where the bridge was all the way along here. And then we skip from this map, there's a gap uh, on another map um, along here and we came into um, into Bungie here that was that section where we were going past the houses uh, where um, Andy lost his camera and we did this big loop around here and then we went through the town and then we got to about here and then realised that we didn't have there wasn't really anywhere to camp, so uh, we paddled back. <laughs> and we are now there at that campsite. So I think in total that distance was probably about uh, 16 miles as well. So, you know, we've done, we've done 32, 33 miles, I should think, over the two days. So I'm pretty happy with that. You know, that was hard going. We've both been pretty tired by the time we've stopped each day. They've been long days of paddling. You know, we, we're finishing the day with sore backs and achy arms and, you know, ready to stop. It's certainly been a, a really good two days paddle so far. Uh, it's been challenging, uh, definitely. Um, and that's purely because of the time of year. Um, the last time I paddled the River Waveney, I did it in winter with Tom, with my boy Tom. Um, and it was completely different. The, the, there was a lot less vegetation in the, in the river because it was winter time. The water level was higher, so you had more clearance. Um, but this time of year, you know, the water level's low. We're finding that we're scraping the boat over shallows and having to get out and push. And normally where you just, you know, you just bob over obstacles. They're there, they're sticking up, they're through the water and you, you, you ground out, you bottom out on them. So, um, you know, it's been a, been a bit of a challenge. It's been very narrow, as you've seen in the video, you know, it's been really narrow in places. Um, and there's been a lot of trees down, so, you're having to really struggle and duck under branches and under under down trees and and squeeze through gaps and and get through which has been fun but it it is a challenge and it does it does take its toll you know it's tiring it's much more tiring than just paddling so uh but um you know it's all it's all part of the fun <laughs>